safe and sound. Eh? Congratulations, Father. It's late, but there she is. Three months in the African courts, but he's come back to you now. Thank you. You see him, Mercedes? Monsieur Morel. Yes, dear girl? The flag is at half mast. Edmund, my dear boy, I am glad to see you. But what does the flag mean? Where is Captain Leclerc? We have had a tragedy at sea, monsieur. The captain died off Chibita Vecchia, sir. A brain fever. Leclerc? Dead? Very did see, sir. And the cargo? All safe, sir. I think you'll find everything to your satisfaction, Monsieur Morel. Good, Dangla. After the uh, misfortune, who took charge? You or Dangla? Sure. You know, sir. Scarcely was the breath out of the good captain's body than Monsieur Dante's assumed command without consulting anybody. As captain's mate, it was my duty to take command, sir. You did well, my boy. Very well. Next to a death at sea, Edmund, all else is insignificant. But were there any other incidents which should be brought to my attention? Yes, sir, one. Bring the prisoner forward. Cadarus. Four days ago, during the burial ceremony, he was caught pilfering stores in the forecastle. True, Cadarus. Have you now added petty thievery to your other accomplishments? If the almighty Monsieur Dante says so, then I'm a thief. Shall we turn him over to the police? I wouldn't imprison any man used to the freedom of the sea, sir. But I'd not have him on my ship. Your ship, young man? I spoke... As acting captain, I know. And as such, what are your orders? You're free, Caderous. But don't show your face to me again. You must stop being so generous to the world, Monsieur Dantes. God will get jealous. Father, Dangler tells me that on the way home the ship was in at Elba. Elba? Why Elba? My ships have no business at Elba. Captain's orders, sir. And the captain was the only man to go ashore. Why? Could it be that he had some business with Napoleon? He didn't tell me the purpose of his visit to the island, sir. Strange. Very strange. Did he leave any papers behind? A will, a testament? On his deathbed, sir. He gave me this. There's no address on it. He told me where to deliver it, sir. I have his full instructions. Well, the matter will take care of itself. Hmm? Aha. Well, we must talk to you no longer. Go, my boy. A far more important personage than old Morel is waiting for you. Go. Mercedes! Another member of this club. What club? The Society for the Destruction of Edmund Dantes. You would like that, wouldn't you, Lieutenant? Wouldn't you like a clear path to your pretty little cousin, Mercedes? Don't mention Mercedes' name in your mouth. Sit down. Please. Both of them. Be quiet. Listen to me. <laughs> I think I see a way to remove this uh, impediment from the lives of all of us. Question, what is the fate of a Bonapartist in these marching times? He's Dante's a Bonapartist. On the way home, 
our ship put in at Elba. Elba? Where the captain went ashore. Two days later, before he died, he handed Dante's an envelope. So? So use your imagination. I'm suggesting that Captain Leclerc went ashore to consort with Napoleon Bonaparte himself. I'm suggesting that envelope contains secret orders. I'm proposing that we take advantage of the possibilities in this situation. Waiter! Pen, paper, ink! A moment, monsieur, please, just a moment. Edmund? Yes, father. I am an old man without manners, but I must ask Mercedes a question. What is it? That young lieutenant, your cousin, Fernand Mondego, I am told he loves you too. Fernand Mondego is loved and lost. The way of the world, father. Fernand is a fiery young man, a Spaniard. I do not want him coming at you one dark night with that long knife. My blade is a match for any Spaniard knife. But... Father, this is no time for bad thoughts. We have good news for you tonight. Yes, tell him now. No, Mondego, I think you'd better write it. Mine is too fine a hand. <laughs> <laughs> this requires something a little rougher. Address it, um... Uh, the prosecutor, the port of Marseille. The prosecutor? Uh, the prosecutor. Um, begin as follows. Uh, monsieur. A captain? Yes, I've been made captain. With a hundred gold sovereigns paid per voyage and a share in the profits. My boy, my boy. Tell him the rest, Edward. Father, with the first money I touch, I mean you to have a house of your own. With a garden. Plant your larkspur, your roses, your flowering vines. What do you see? Oh, nothing. Nothing. And I now pronounce you man and wife. Now then, when I say those words tomorrow, the groom will kiss the bride. Not now, tomorrow, I said. At wedding, tomorrow. Now, the organ will begin again, and you will take her by the arm and lead her up the aisle, out of the church. Do it, do it, do it. Now the others, family and friends, will turn and follow them up the aisle. No, not tomorrow, I said, not today. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I said. Remember to come back tomorrow for the wedding. Don't forget. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I said. Edmund Dantes? That is my name, monsieur. You're under arrest. <laughs> Meaning of this. Hmm? What is my offense? It's money. Must be some mistake. <laughs> oh, Fernand, what is happening? You've got to take your hands off her! Don't touch her! You are the mate of the Argus. Yes, Monsieur le Prosecutor. You don't seem to be dressed for a conspiracy. Conspiracy? I was arrested at the rehearsal for my wedding. Tomorrow I'm to be married. Have you ever served under the usurper Bonaparte? 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 What are you saying, Monsieur? I don't. It is reported that your political affinities are extremist. Affinities? Monsieur de Villefort, all I know is my work. I love the sea. I love my fiance. I love my father. These are my affinities. If they're political, then they are, as you say, sir, extremist. I believe that. Do you recognize this writing? No, sir. Are you sure? Is it true? No, sir. Did your captain give you an envelope? Yes, sir. Where is it? I carry it with me. Give it to me. 
I gave him my word, sir. I order you in the name of the king to give it to me. In the name of the king? Of course, sir. What does it say, monsieur? Had you known the contents of this letter, you wouldn't be carrying it on your person. You would have denied any knowledge of it when I asked for it. That you actually surrendered it to me clearly establishes your innocence of any complicity in this affair. Then, if I am innocent, monsieur... You go back to your bride-to-be. God bless you, monsieur de Villefort. Oh, one more thing. Yes, monsieur? I see no address on the envelope. I was told when and where to deliver it. When? Uh, tonight, sir. To what address? 15 Avenue Montaigne. To any particular person there? Yes, sir. A uh, Monsieur Noitier. Say the name once more. Francois de Noitier. Is that all, monsieur? May uh, I go? No, no. A few more questions. Uh, do you know this person, this Noirtier? Oh, no, sir. Have you spoken his name to anyone? To no one but you, sir. Good. I am sorry to tell you this, but I cannot dismiss you right now. Why not, monsieur? Yours is a political arrest. I must detain you overnight. That is the law, unfortunately. You will be dismissed in the morning. I guarantee it. You see, the principal charge against you is this letter. Without the letter, there is no evidence against you whatsoever. Monsieur de Villefort, you are a good man. <laughs> now, listen carefully. Should anyone interrogate you, you don't speak a word about this letter. No, sir, I will not. And you have never heard the name of Noirtier? Never. Splendid. You will be taken to the Palais de Justice uh, just for the night, so don't worry. It is only a formality. Take it. Noirtier. Noirtier. Must that name pursue me like a demon to my grave? Pardon, monsieur. This is not the way to the Palais de Justice. Monsieur, in the name of mercy, where are you taking me? I'll give you in the name of mercy good advice. Close your mouth. But Monsieur de Villefort told me we were to go to the Young Palais de Justice. Young man, always follow good advice. What the devil? You're expecting a messenger. But not you, that's impossible. Uh, me, no. <laughs> no. Uh, to put the circumstance in a nutshell, your messenger was intercepted, Father. And the message? Destroyed. Uh, sit down, please, sit down. The paper was destroyed. The message is now written in here, written intact. Dates, names, places. All the details of your precious little emperor's intended escape from... Elba. I have no intention of telling it to you. Nice to see you, my son. And nice to see you, father. I know you would never betray your comrades, but betray them you will if you don't do exactly as I say, for I will then reveal all their names to the police. Always the cunning devil. Ever the selfish little beast. You have been my secret embarrassment ever since I started my public career. My own father a follower of Napoleon. I have lived with the fear of discovery long enough. Your days in this foolish cause are now over. From now on, you will never be out of my sight. Indeed, you come with me to Paris tonight. To Paris? Yes, yes, it seems I have news for His Majesty's government. Uh, don't worry, I will give no names involved in the escape, only 
the facts. They should be enough, I think, to astonish the bureaucracy of Paris and bring me to the attention of the king himself. You will soon be the father of an important man. Doesn't that please you? It should. Well, there's been a mistake. I was ordered to the Palais de Justice. It was Monsieur de Villefort's order. Send for Monsieur de Villefort. Do you like me to send for the king as well? Or the queen? <laughs> Listen to me. Come back. Monsieur de Villefort is my friend. He will be very angry. Come back. At least take a letter to... To my wife. What have I done? What is my crime? Breakfast! Listen to me a moment. Just one moment. Tell me, how can I arrange to see the warden? Someday. Someday? But I'm to be released today. Today! Monsieur de Villefort's orders. And who is Monsieur de Villefort? Monsieur, or do we starve one more day?
Are you a prisoner? Can you hear me? Edmund Dantes. Why are you here? They said I was a Bonapartist. How long have you been here? I don't know. I was imprisoned on the 28th of February, 1815. Ten years. <sighs> How long have you been here? I am the Abbe Faria, born in Italy, raised a priest in Italy. I've been in this place since 1810, 15 years. The glorious wisdom of the political world, Monsieur Dantes. You are here because they said you were for Bonaparte. I was in prison for being against him. <laughs> Five years ago, I laid my plans for escape. My calculations took me a year to make the necessary tools, took me a year. I've been digging for three years. Three years? I had but one mathematical instrument, this one. And now I find it was guilty of an inaccuracy. I took this wall for the seawall of the prison. I calculated 40 degrees instead of 50. You were digging for the seawall? Uh, come with me. My mallet. <laughs> Chisel. Where did you get them? I made them.
Just in simple terms, it just means just a quarter past twelve o'clock. A clock? A clock, calendar, astronomical chart. Here, I have something to show you. My look. Look. My needle made from a fishbone. Like my chisel made from one of the iron clamps of my bedstead. Like my pincers. <laughs> and my knife. And my lamp. A lamp needs oil. Which I make from the suet of the meat they give us on holy days. How do you like your lamp? Oh, I claim to have a skin disease. I sometimes ask for sulfur to relieve the pain from which I replenish my match. Mm. Oh. All this for a tunnel for my hope and salvation. Now my dead hope. Five years spent on a tunnel that leads not to freedom, but to another man's cell. Abby Faria, listen. Your tunnel runs in the same direction as the outer gallery. Yes. The seawall is here. I can just glimpse it from my window. Half your tunnel runs in the right direction. From the center point, we turn. You call it 50 degrees, I say two points more, north by northeast, and dig to the seawall about 100 meters. Half my tunnel runs in, in the right direction. How long will it take? Two of us. Four years. And while we work, would you teach me all the things you know? Mathematics, theology, philosophy, living languages and dead languages, the history of the world. I give thanks to heaven. I'll be able to teach once more. Edmund, for today's lesson in philosophical logic, let's apply our brains to some deductive thinking in the case of Edmond Dantes. First, to whom could your imprisonment, your disappearance, have been of some benefit? Consider, you were about to be appointed captain of the Argos. To whom would that position go should you suddenly vanish? Danglar. Isaac, who would Mercedes turn to were Edmund Dantes suddenly to vanish? Mondego. Isaac, one night you saw Danglar and Mondego in a cafe writing with... Cataros. Could they have been writing with letters that accused you, these three? Danglar. Mondego. Cataros. Examined by the prosecutor of the port, who was very sympathetic, he burned the letter which was addressed to a Nwati. Nwati. I knew a person of that name at the court of the Queen of Etruria, an ardent disciple of Napoleon. Edmund, what was your prosecutor called? De Villefort. De... Ha! <laughs> what have 
Mercer, you have unlocked the whole mystery. My friend at the court of Etruria, the most ardent Bonapartist I've ever known, his name was Noitier de Villefort. His brother? No, my age. His father? I presume so. His own father, a Bonapartist? So, he destroys your letter. And me. And you. much in his face that was never there before. Dangla, Mondego. Vengeance belongs to the Lord, Edmund. Turn away from such unholy thoughts before they destroy you. Caderousse, filth! I'll finish the tunnel myself. Edmund, you must finish the tunnel and escape. Find the treasure. Treasure? What is this? A map of the island of Monte Cristo. This is the lost map of Cesare Spada, with whose death in 1498 vanished one of the great treasures of the world. This fortune has been buried on Monte Cristo for three and a half centuries. Oh, Edmund, I wanted us to find this treasure together. Now it is for you to find alone. Do great charitable deeds with it. Spend this fortune which God has been hoarding for you in good and holy ways. Edmund, you must escape and find the treasure. My profession forbade me to marry, so... So you are my son, the child of my captivity. Make thy works of goodness a memorial to me. What is such treasure to me? My real treasure lies here. You have enriched me beyond... Uh. Oh! <coughs> Yeah, he's that all right, the poor old lunatic. 
you'll get the sack. Well, now we wait for the tide to change. Come on. Maybe. Dead. No, he's half alive. Wake up, old man. How do you know that he's old? Look at him. <coughs> Where am I? Aboard the good ship, Legorno, out of Corsica. I am the captain. Bertuccio is my name. This is my mate, Jacopo. Now, who are you? Eh? What is your name? Where do you go? The island of Rion. The top two currents should take us there in two hours. You know these waters, eh? Eh? Tuccio, Jacopo. 
What are Italians doing in these waters? I think you have already guessed. How is the smuggling these days, good? Terrible. We need a navigator. A navigator who knows his way in this jungle of waters. Would you... Would you join us? <laughs> Natalie. That... Who are you? What is your name? Where do you come from? There is no sign of a shipwreck. There's been a storm. The cannon of Chateau D. Yeah. You? Yeah, Capo. On this boat, a man's business is his business. You have a young man's deal. How old are you? If this is the year 1829, is it? Oh, of course. <laughs> then I am 33 years old. And I will be 34 years old. Only because of you, my good friends. <laughs> Mercedes is married. To Mondego? To Perna Mondego. And? Tell me. I don't know why I must be the one to tell. Your father is dead. And Edmond, this burns in my throat. Of starvation. Your father died of starvation. had delivered me into the hands of two smugglers who breathed life back into me, befriended me on faith alone, asking no questions, until the day I was strong enough to fulfill my promise to the Abbey Faria. is buried on Monte Cristo. It's been there for three and a half centuries. Oh, Edmund, I wanted us to find this treasure together. Now it is for you to find alone. Do great charitable deeds with it. Spend this fortune which God has been hoarding for you in good and holy ways. Was I only humoring the fancies of a beloved madman? By coming to the island of Monte Cristo, was I simply laying the spirit of the Abbey to eternal rest? Or was there a hope in my heart of hearts that his map would truly be the end of the rainbow?
Abbey Faria. Dear priest, dear saint. I promise you by the God I had for so long forsaken. I promise you we will build your hospitals and house your orphans. I promise you there will be a flood of good things in a hundred abandoned corners of the earth and all in your name. And I promise you, Edmond Dantes, imprisoned in the prime of life, banished from the world for 14 years. I promise you, Edmond Dantes, you shall have your revenge. The world is mine! He did say a quarter after the hour. He did, Baron Dangler. Such panache! He takes the most splendid castle in the whole of the landscape of France. Such abandon, he spends... Oh, my word, how the man spends such mystery. All these rumors of a harem on the top of his castle, these whispers of a fleet of pirate ships prowling the Mediterranean. How did he contact the bank? I was approached by his equerry, sir, a rough-looking fellow with a terrible scar. Yes, <laughs> typical. An equerry with a scar. He has all the trappings of the exotic. Mystery clings to him like scandal. What an awe of legend he's spread around Europe in the last five years. His own intelligence network, and tentacles around the world. A whole army of agents ceaselessly questing. Questing. Quest, questing for what? Huh? Nobody knows. Then this pasha of mystery, this Mycenas from nowhere, is coming to see me. <laughs> What time is my appointment with the prosecutor? Not until 11, monsieur. What is it? The Count of Monte Cristo. Well, show me! Baron Dangla. Sit down, do sit down, uh, Monsieur le Comte. intending to stay only a month. I've since decided to stay on another two or three. Paris will be proud, sir. I've been banking out of my pocket thus far. Now I wish to open an account with your establishment. As an opening account, shall we say... five million? Marvelous. The power of little pieces of paper, my dear Baron. As marvelous as any creation of man, including his poetry, music, and painting. Who handles money properly is also an artist. Yes. Yes. Five. Uh, monsieur, I shall take uh, Advise me through my staff. I thank you, Baron. Monsieur the Count. I am impressed by your head of Imhotep, sir, a fine specimen. Imhotep, uh, yes. Uh, oh, and this one, uh, sir. A most ingenious favor. Oh. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you indeed, sir. Is there any other service we can render in the meantime? Uh, some uh, convenience uh, in point of fact, Baron. Whatever the Count of Monte Cristo may desire. I make my home in the country, Monsieur. Yes, I know. But now, for convenience, I've taken an apartment on the Champs Elysees. I'm told there have been random robberies in the neighborhood. For police protection, to whom does one apply? And all papers in the case should be consigned to the King's attorney. At once, Monsieur de Villefort. Thank you. 
The Baron Danglars. Danglars, you are late. My dear De Villefort, I have the honor to present the Count of Monte Cristo. The Count of Monte Cristo. My dear Count, welcome to my house. Monsieur. Uh, please sit down. I hope I'm not intruding on the business of the day. Intruding? Not at all. A minor matter, all dispensed with. Uh, surely, uh, you've been reading about this cutthroat, Jacques Benoit, who killed the brother of Senator Gallimard. Yes. Has a judgment been reached? Indeed. The guillotine. If a man tortures and murders your brother or your son or your father, kills one of those beings who leave an eternal emptiness and a bleeding wound when they're torn from your heart, do you really think society has given you sufficient reparation because the blade of the guillotine has passed between the murderer's trapezius and his occipital bone? Because the man who caused you immeasurable suffering has endured a few seconds of physical pain. My dear Count, are you suggesting the medieval way, torture? I am suggesting the holy remedy, an eye for an eye. Yes, yes indeed, indeed. Very interesting. Uh, well, uh, when the Count uh, mentioned to me that he was seeking police protection for his residence, uh, I took the liberty of... Uh, this I... office is at the service of the Count of Monte Cristo. We can post police officials on both streets of his residence, uh, front and rear, as many as you may desire. Monsieur de Villefort is too generous. Paris must do its very best for distinguished visitors. Father, you promised to come and see grandfather this morning. The morning is half gone. You know he frets. Good morning, Madame Langlois. Good morning, sir. How long will this business take? Yeah, can... You know he must eat a nap. Do you have such visitors, Father? This gentleman doesn't look like a criminal or a lawyer. <laughs> I'm afraid my daughter is outspoken to a fault and slightly ill-mannered. Please forgive her. Father. Uh, Valentine, I have the honor to present the Count of Monte Cristo. Monte Cristo? Oh, sir. I shall be the envy of every girl in Paris. What they're saying is true. You are handsome. And are you as rich as they say, monsieur? Rich in experience, mademoiselle. Rich in years. And growing richer by the moment in my appreciation of the loveliness of Paris. Monsieur, are you busy? Am I? Do me the greatest of favors. Will you come to me, my grandfather? Uh, Valentine, will you stop this nonsense? You would frighten his life for many days to come. Mademoiselle honors me. The Count of Monte Cristo. How extraordinary. But how did you manage to bring him here? As a matter of fact, it wasn't easy. Grandfather, I bring you the Count of Monte Cristo. Can you see how influential I am? The man of all Paris is gasping to meet, and I bring him to your room. Monsieur le Comte, my grandfather, Monsieur de Noirtier de Villefort. Honored, Monsieur. My grandfather is paralyzed, monsieur, from an old wound at Austerlitz. He can speak only with his eyes. What is it you want, grandfather? Another pillow? Mm -hmm. Some water? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. G. But why he wants his glasses? He's delighted to see you. Are you not, Grandfather? What other language do we need? But was it time to start his meal? My Grandfather is a prisoner of his body, Monsieur. But his will is like his mind, unconquerable. He possesses what few men can boast of. The devotion of one loving heart. That's a lonely statement, Monsieur. Monsieur Albert is here, mademoiselle. Albert! Oh, monsieur, please, I shall return immediately. You must excuse me, sir, if I seem to stare. It doesn't often happen that a man may gaze upon the one great nemesis of his life. Don't strain for explanations, monsieur. 
It is now my turn to leave you with a mystery. Until the day I explain myself to your son. Monsieur le Comte, may I present Albert Mondego? Monsieur, it is a great honor. You honor me, monsieur. All Paris speaks of you, monsieur. Good morning, monsieur. All Paris yearns to shake the hand of the mysterious stranger. And here am I. And here you are shaking that hand straight from his arm. The city is on fire, monsieur. We talk, talk, talk about the Count of Monte Cristo. Back and told you, sir. My father, monsieur. Even my father is caught up in the game. It's, um, he says you're an Oriental because he says he met you in Turkey. Because um, my father was once ambassador to the kingdom of Yanina. Uh, surely you've heard of my father, the Count of Mondego. Who has not heard of the great General Fernand Mondego? A man I've always wanted to meet. My dear Count, I'm uh, the father of Albert. General. My son astonishes me. I had no idea he had reached so high in the social scale. It is I who am scaling the heights, monsieur. Who has not heard of the great exploits on the battlefield of General Mondego? My dear Count. Monsieur le Count, may I present my mother, the Countess of Mondego? Oh, monsieur, my son is still a child who plays childish games. He tells me we have a visitor and he refuses to give me his name. He says I shall be delightfully surprised. We've not met before, have we, monsieur? Have I the honor of addressing, monsieur? Your servant, madam, the Count of Monte Cristo. You saw her? She knew you? She thinks she knows me. But she refuses to believe what she thinks. And when she does believe it? It will be too late, Princess. We shall move like the sword of the Lord with a terrible swiftness. You love her still? No. She cannot influence you. She cannot dissuade you. Answer me, please. No power in heaven or earth could dissuade me. No angel, no demon could keep me from my revenge. Good, my lord, good. Remember, your revenge is my revenge. I'll leave the Mondego papers. Here for? We have only to hear from the doctor. Tengla. We have all the documents, Master. Good. The public sees Villefort as the loving father, devoted son, the faithful watchdog of the law. Tengla is the financial wizard, advisor to great fortunes, the lion who guards the nation's wealth. Mondego is the great war hero. Favorite of the boulevards, affectionately called the Peacock for his many decorations. Well, we know Villefort is a wolf, Danglar a pig, Mondego a hyena, and we're finally ready to go hunting. Hunt! 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 Good, very good. The rest. The rest. Good. 
very good. You are the master now. I'm in the pupil. Put it back. We've had a devil of a time finding you. People usually do. Six years ago, you were sentenced to the galleys. The charge was smuggling. Escaped from the galleys, caught. Sentenced to life in the galleys. You escaped again. Read on. I find myself fascinating. You've been a thief, smuggler, embezzler, possibly an assassin, during the course of which you've learned to speak fluent Italian. Perfetto, signor. From now on, you are Andrea, the Count of Cavalcanti. Am I? You are the son of Major Bartolomeo di Cavalcanti, a descendant of the Cavalcanti whose names are inscribed in the Golden Book of Florence. You are very rich. Good. I spend a lot of money, of course. Of course. You will take apartments which I have selected for you on the Faubourg. You will have three servants. You will purchase a carriage, go to Baltiste for it, the horses from Devedeur. You will pay court to a beautiful young girl. I wish you to do it expensively. For the next few weeks, when you're not with her, you will be seen everywhere with me. Ah, the Count accompanies the Count. <laughs> Precisely. Now, what is your name? The Count of Cavalcanti. Present my friend, Il Conte di Cavalcante, whom you were gracious enough to include in your invitation. Any friend of Monte Cristo, of course. May I present my daughter, Valentine? Mademoiselle. Monsieur le Comte. Cavalcante is in Paris on family business. And he leaves his wife in Italy? Oh, he's unmarried. Oh. Have you known him long? But a few days. He came to me with letters of introduction from my brokers in Rome. I know his family, of course. All Italy knows the Cavalcante, who were rich when the Medici were peasant stock. But I would be deeply grateful. Let us hope her fiancé does not take exception. But my daughter has no fiancé. She's not engaged to Albert Mondego? Not at all, not at all. They're only friends. should own a newspaper. Second, I wish to buy some Spanish government bonds. In what amount of purchaser? One million. In uh, Spanish bonds? Can the purchase be effected immediately? Immediately, sir. And confidentially? With the utmost discretion. It would not be wise for anyone to follow my lead in the market. I'm a gambler, not an investor. Good day, Baron. Tomorrow I leave for London on business. Sir, please give my regards to that fascinating city. Though the English will never learn how to eat. There are places. As you and I know, my dear Baron, money can buy anything. Anything. Gira. Gira. Make out an order for a million in Spanish bonds for the Count of Monte Cristo. Spanish? And for myself, one million. For my private account. 
barons, Spanish bonds at this time. When Monte Cristo buys, I buy. Have you forgotten the result when we followed his lead the last time? Does he know that you... Contact our most important portfolio, sir. Inform uh, Delidier and uh, Beaufort that the House of Dangla recommends heavy investment in Spanish bonds. <laughs> well, do it! Now! The Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> Your semaphore station? Mine, I work it. I've done for many years, but I never have any visitors. How does it work? There is another one on the far horizon. That's my right hand correspondent. And there is my left hand. When I receive a message from right, I transmit it to left. Thus, are messages from Spain transmitted all the way to Paris in a matter of hours. A modern miracle. 3,000 francs. Five years pay if you relay this message to Paris. But this is not official. You insult me, sir. It is an insult. Impossible. It is the official telegraph service, sir. The King Don Carlos has invaded Spain through the Catalonian frontier. Civil war is in force. Civil war? What will happen to Spanish bonds? Yeah, if I may suggest, sir. Yes, suggest, suggest. A quick sellout. The quicker, the better. That's it. Yes. Sell every bond. Now. The moment the exchange opens, sir. My reputation, the reputation of my bank. I invest my client's money in civil wars, in cataclysms. Shall I have a client left tomorrow? You have another suggestion, have you? Yes. Make good all losses. Yes. From the bank's reserves. From your own. You're insane. I can place the order to sell now, monsieur. What is it you want of me? A little of your time for which you'll be paid. I am your servant, sir. Your name is Caderus. It is my real name. How did you know? You've spent seven years of your life in His Majesty's galleys. You made one attempt to escape. Yes. And if it were not for your certain... companion in escape, he played you false. Faustino. My life is dedicated to one purpose. Find him and kill him. Revenge is a sweet thing to live for or die for. Sir, I have other pressing business which should take only a moment. Would it inconvenience you to wait outside? I'm your servant, sir. Monsieur? Faustino! Faustino. God is sometimes good. What black hole in hell did you come back to life? On the cul-de-sac in which you left me to die. <laughs> Thank you. 
Did you see? He attacked me. What could I do? Take him to the police. You know this man. Who are you, Monte Cristo? Who are you? Take him away. One. He is not of the house of Cavalcanti. His name is Benedetto. His most recent name, that is. He is a notorious escaped criminal. And he wanted to marry my daughter. He doesn't lack nerve, no, I must say. He's an escaped galley slave, among other offenses. Duped. He has duped us all, Sergeant, including the infallible Monte Cristo. A cavalcanti, indeed. This upstart, this blackguard. He has insulted my very person, which compels me to prosecute this case myself. In fact, it becomes a moral duty. Lost rights, huh? I have not been tried yet. Chris, go away. Andrea Di Cavalcanti? Go away. Faustino. You? My blessed protector, will you protect me thus on the guillotine? Huh? You will not be convicted if you do as I say. Memorize the first page entirely. Familiarize yourself with all the other documents. I will be in the courtroom. Keep your eyes on me. So this man, Andrea Benedetto Faustino, he assumes a new name for each fresh transgression. He is no simple rascal, no petty scoundrel. He is a serpent of subtlety. A giant of cunning. But now, this murderer has been caught in the act with the weapon in his hand, gloating over the fallen body of his victim. So you can pass only one verdict on the disposition of this miserable creature. Death! Accuse your name and surname. Monsieur le Président, I will give my name last of all. Is in order for the prisoner to refuse, let us proceed. Your age? I am 21 years old. I was born on the night of the 27th of September, 1817. Where were you born? At Tauteuil, near Paris. Your vocation? Oh, I am a professional man, a forger, a thief, on occasion an assassin. Have you a request, Monsieur de Villefort? Questions from the bench have been completed. All but one. Now, prisoner, now. Will you consent to say your name, your true name? I do not know it. But I know my father's name. Then repeat your father's name. My father is the king's prosecutor. What did you say? His name is De Villefort. Order! Order! Silence! Or I clear the court! Silence! Silence! In the year 1817, Monsieur de Villefort entered a house at 28 Rue de la Fontaine in the village of Auteuil. His purpose? To keep there, hidden from polite society, a young woman. After a year of secret residence in Auteuil, the young woman, to Villefort's exasperation, gave birth to an infant son. Hours after the birth, the mother died. That very night, Villefort took the son, wrapped it in a cloth, and buried it alive in the garden of the house. The burial, Monsieur le Président, was witnessed from an upper window of the house by a servant. It was he who disinterred the body. Discovering it was still alive, he forthwith carried me to a foundling home. 
At the age of 13, I ran away from the home and embarked upon that distinguished career which has finally brought me, Monsieur le Président, to this court. The lease on the house in Auteuil signed by Monsieur de Villefort. The death certificate of a Mademoiselle Emilie Goncourt signed by Polyte Fleury of Auteuil. A certificate from the same doctor testifying that Monsieur de Villefort was the father of the child. Deposition, testament, sworn statements, etc., etc., etc. Be advisable, sir. No. What is it, sir? No, 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 no! Listen to this, Sirat. It is without foundation that the Journal du Globe yesterday announced a revolt in Spain. A telegraphic signal improperly interpreted owing to the fog was the cause of this error. There was no invasion, there is no war. Spain is at peace. Dangla, ah, you have seen the paper. You know what's happening. Is that why you so magnanimously made good our losses, so that you could buy up our bonds? But gentlemen, I've sold my bonds too. I swear it. You lie. I don't believe you, Dangla. Dangla, do you know what you have cost me? You've read the paper, I presume. But gentlemen, you've lost nothing. I, I lose when I do not make. I want to know what this is all about. I've made good at every penny. I demand to know. I will take the matter up with the chamber. The board of governors. Confess, Dongla. Confess, you are a scoundrel. Be advised, Dongla. I am taking you to court. After me. I take him to court first. No, after me. On charges of false representation, mishandling of funds. Embezzlement. I begin by withdrawing my account from this bank. Yes, so will I, before the run begins. The run? If you can't trust the biggest banker in Paris, you uh, can't. I shall go now at once. Indeed, come with me. I don't want to lose. I only hope that we shall get there in time. I'll see you in Paris. Albert. What a pleasant surprise, Albert. I'm not here to exchange hypocritical expressions of politeness, but to demand an explanation. For what, my dear boy? All Paris buzzes with the story in the paper this morning. The one casting terrible aspersions on my father. On his integrity. On his military accomplishments. On his honor. Yes. It is in the Journal du Globe. The newspaper you so recently purchased. You are in my home, Albert. I alone have the right to raise my voice here. You are responsible for that story. Do you deny it? No. I consider the glove thrown, Albert. 
Tomorrow morning, sir. The field of Mars. Dawn. The field of Mars. Why? He challenged me, madam. And what would you expect from a proud son? The general is his father. I had a father once. Then you know how the boy feels. You can understand how zealous he is after the general's good name. What general? My business is with a lieutenant I used to know. What business? Revenge, madam. For marrying the girl you love. He does not deserve your vengeance. It was I. I was weak. I could bear my loneliness no longer. I married him because they told me you died in the Chateau d'If shortly after your arrest. But why was I in the Chateau d'If? Why was I arrested? I do not know. I presume you recognize the hand. How did you come by this? With bribery, madam. I cannot believe. For 14 years, because of that letter, I lived in a dungeon of the Chateau d'If, so near to you. And I never knew that you'd married, or that my father had died of hunger. Hunger? Oh, I did not know. We had moved away. Ask me to forgive a man for stealing my love with a lover's deception. Very well, since you ask it, I forgive him that. Ask me to forgive him for stealing 14 years of my life. Very well, forgive him. But forgive him for destroying my father. Never, madam. Never. In my dreams, I have seen you dead. Thrown to the bottom of one of those pits where jailers throw their dead prisoners. And I wake from this incessant dream with a cry, shuddering and cold. Have you ever dreamed your father dead of hunger? Have you ever dreamed of the one you love giving her hand to a rival while you perish at the bottom of a pit? Worse. I have seen him I loved on the point of murdering my son. Oh, Edmund, please. What good has it done for me to mourn for you eternally in the secret recesses of my heart? When I thought you dead, I should have died too. But foolishly, I went on living and for nearly 20 years compared all men to you and found them wanting. Missing you has been a day after day, year after year torment to me. And in all this time, my one consolation has been my son, my innocent son who should have been ours. Our son, Edmund. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She told you. Everything. I offer you my apologies, sir. You have every right to expose my father. Providence again. I am the emissary of God. I've been spared to carry out his will. 
General Mondego, this special committee of the House of Deputies is well aware of your illustrious past. We salute with profound respect the decorations you bear as testament to your extraordinary military career. It is then a great disturbance to this committee to read the revelations in the newspaper Le Journal du Globe. Starting yesterday with a threat of disclosures, Le Journal du Globe continues today with a long list of definite accusations. It is written here, in the Greek war when you were French emissary to the court of Ali Pasha, that you betrayed him to the Turks. It is written here... Monsieur le Président, may I proceed immediately to my own defense? Proceed, Monsieur. Document. A signed letter from the Ali Pasha himself reposing in me expressions of the utmost confidence. So complete was his faith in me that on his deathbed he resigned his wife and daughter to my care. His wife and daughter. What happened to that wife and daughter? I searched for them, Monsieur le Président, in the midst of the battle. My life was in constant danger, but I searched for them until I found them. They had been slaughtered by the enemy. Uh, can you produce testaments to the truth of what you have asserted? Monsieur le Président, if the signed proof of Ali Pasha is not enough, I offer my word of honor as a French officer. Last but not least, this. You ask for witnesses of proof. I ask for a show of witnesses against me. What is the evidence? Some article in a scurrilous journal? Who gave these lies to this newspaper? Where is he? Let him come forth and throw a glove in my face. Monsieur le Comte, your defense has a ring of validity. Your points well taken. You will therefore be gratified to learn the contents of this note I have just received, as follows. I was present at the death of Ali Pasha. I know what is become of the wife and the daughter. I claim the honor of being heard. Who wrote those words? The note is unsigned, sir, but the witness can be summoned on your approval. Only on your approval. Let him appear. Let him appear. Identify yourself, please. I am the daughter of Ali Pasha. In front of you, sir, is a register of my birth and my baptism. There is also in that packet a record of the sale of my person and that of my mother. The sale, you say? A French officer sold us into slavery for the sum of 40,000 francs. The name of that officer? Fernand Mondego, you were trusted by my noble father. You were loved by him as a son. He entrusted you with the safe conduct of his wife and daughter. But you're a liar, a traitor, an assassin. Assassin! It was your soul that killed my father. Monsieur le General, will you reply? Lies, lies, they're lies. You take the word of an infidel foreigner against the word of a general of the army of the king? The woman is an imposter. Who is an imposter? She is truly the daughter of Ali Pasha. Those documents will prove it. They'll verify themselves soon enough. And when they are verified, General Mondego. Count of Mondego, hero of Yanina. What, what is your connection with this woman? Ask first, what is my connection with one named Edmund Dantes? Edmund. So, the light. 
light begins to break. Our sailor boy, back from the Isle of the Dead, eh? <laughs> Insisting on his revenge and getting it, I begin to see, yes. Caderousse dead, eh? Dangler dead. Villefort confined to an asylum. Is it my turn, Edmund? It is. You've done it exceedingly well, the way you expose us one by one, and then you strike. You ruin a man with exquisite finesse. But before you kick this dog to death, beware. He barks. Fight! Well, having ruined me, you now give me cause for revenge. I claim the right to send the dead back to the dead. Can you defend yourself, Edmund? Or do you stare boldly? Say your prayers. You won't escape prison by the simple trick of dying. You'll serve your sentence in this world before you go to hell. General Montego, you are under arrest. Where is the house empty? Where is the Countess Mondego? She has gone to Marseille. When? Yesterday. traveling to Africa to find my son and be near him he's joined the army Albert a soldier he wants to expiate his father's sins let me join you on your voyage I can be of help to you both my son would never permit that once you said he should have been our son should have been yes but he has a father and he has his father's name a name you so thoroughly destroyed that was simple justice, madam. And believe me, it brought me no joy. But now my task's accomplished. I've no particular place in the world, no strong desire in life, but to make amends where I've hurt the innocent. Avenging angels may not ask forgiveness of their victims. I am no longer the instrument of God. I've been plunged back into nothingness. 
I'm searching for something lost. My soul, myself, for Edmund Dantes. You will never find him. He died a long time ago in the Chateau d'If. And much of me is buried with him. But I celebrate the Count of Monte Cristo's return to the world of men. And I wish for him, from the depths of my heart, that he will find the peace for which he yearns. But never. Never will he find that perfect love. Which two young people lost. Irretrievably lost so many, many years ago. Bon voyage. Countess Mondego. Goodbye, Count.